So what I'm going to talk to you about is getting along with your body. Well, I'm glad all of you brought your body to this lecture. Um, there is you and your body, and I want to I want to speak to you both. Uh, it almost feels like marriage counseling. I mean, it actually is in a way because uh, you know whenever you picked up this body, you picked up your parents and decided you wanted to play that game of having that body and play the game of life. And uh, so I know it's like a marriage. And like any marriage, you're supposed to be is until death do you part. Jonathan leads to murder. <laughs> <laughs> Right. Well, legally you can get a divorce, but uh, uh, most people don't abandon their body until they die. I mean, occasionally it happens. Somebody can. There are people that are walk-ins. You know, somebody leaves, somebody comes in. Anyway, um, so how do you create a cooperative, cooperative relationship with your body? And what does an ideal scene look like between you and your body? And believe me, people have all kinds of different ideas about it. Um, but it's good, it's always interesting to uh, go back to the basics. What is a person? You know, a person is a, a spirit with a mind occupying a body. And the Thetan is the senior in the relationship. The mind is a control and communication network between the Thetan and the physical world. Now, you've really got several minds that you work with as a Theta. You've got your own um, Theta Universe mind, which is your uh, stable datums, your values, your importances, um, your policies, <coughs> your fixed ideas, your decisions, um, the knowledge that you have. That's what you take from lifetime to lifetime. And then the body has a the body's mind is the brain and the nervous system, and the body has an intelligence as well. Um, you could call this the genetic entity. We'll get into that a little bit more later. The body, of course, is a living organism, and what is the hat of a body? What does the body do in this relationship? What do you do? What does the body do? Interesting, interesting question. If you if you get that wrong, it's, it creates problems. <laughs> okay. Now, like any good relationship, um, uh, good, any good relationship is based on ARC and KRC. If you've looked at any time that you've been happy with a senior or been happy with a junior, you'll find that there was uh, the person controlling you had good ARC. They had some knowledge, they had some responsibility, they were running good control. Um, it's actually pleasurable to be uh, managed in such a way. It's a very rare experience, but it shows it can be done. And uh, as a manager, when you, when you uh, have affinity for who you're managing and you have knowledge and you know, responsibility, reality, communication, you can have quite a good cooperative relationship and you can accomplish a lot more together than you can separately. So that really is the hallmark of a, a good relationship. So as far as affinity goes, um, a lot of people don't like their bodies. And uh, kind of an out point. Uh, the other side of it is, well, does your body like you? <laughs> <laughs> Affinity is space, and um, the uh, the ideal scene in relationship to a senior and uh, a junior relationship is that the junior is in your space. Your space includes that person. So, as a being, as a thing, you should include the body in your space. Well, that means that you're bigger than the body. You know, you're aware of yourself as an independent entity whose 
Ari said something very interesting about, uh, about bodies. He says, it's not that most people think that they're their body, it's they think that they're the same shape as their body. The minute, the minute you have a different parameter than your body, you're by that, by that token exterior to the body. You know, whether you're looking at things from the corner of the room or just aware of more space around you than your body occupies, to that degree you're exterior from the body. So that's a good position from which to uh, run a body. It's very hard to run a body when you're completely, uh, when your own space is smaller than the body's. You know? <laughs> uh, it's like I already said on one tape, you know, most people are in the un unfortunate situation of occupying a small spot between or behind one eye. <laughs> but once you've had some auditing, your, your own space opens up and you're a lot more inclusive. Then it comes to reality. What reality do most people have on their bodies? Well, there's a huge gradient there. You could study your entire lifetime, and in fact, many lifetimes, never know everything there is to know about bodies or your body. Um, in fact, discoveries are being made all the time. You mean doctors that specialize in a particular disease could never, ever read everything that's published. They would have to they would have to be reading seven or eight hours a day, every day of the week, just to keep up with the papers and things that are being published about their particular field. So nobody can ever know everything there is to know about a body. Which, uh, but what do you really need to know? Well, it's like, what do you need to know to manage anything, really? Um, you have to know what your own purposes are. You have to understand something about the purposes of of what you're trying to manage, and you try to work out something that's compatible. You know, the trick in any relationship is is being true to yourself and being responsible to the other. You know, whether that's your relationship with your body or your relationship with a co-worker or your relationship with a group. If you can be true to yourself and responsible to the others, you've, you've pulled it off. You've done, you've done a good job. And you could also call that pan-determinism. So the ideal scene with regards to bodies is pan-determinism. As far as communication with the body, so infinity, reality, and communication, a lot of people aren't in very good calm with their body. Things go on with their body that they really don't know about. I don't know if you ever woke up in the morning seeing a big bruise on your leg and wondered how you got it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's a hell of a part let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Not necessarily. People, are, just people are confused about it. And uh, I remember auditing a girl one time on hellos and okays on body parts. And she, she gave me a couple body parts and bothering her. And we, we did hellos and okays on her liver. She had a nice EP on it. And I said, okay, well, we're going to uh, take up the kidney next. You know, your, your left kidney. She says, shouldn't we do it on my other liver? <laughs> so, Having your own rudiments in on your body is, 
is a good uh, beginning. You know, like any senior, if your rudiments are out on your junior, your management of that junior is not going to be that great. But if your rudiments are in and you know what you're doing, you know, you're going to get cooperation and it's going to be uh, enjoyable for everybody concerned. Um, you and the body have different purposes and different values and different importances. There are certainly certain common things. You know, the, the higher degree of ethics and uh, uh, resides in you as a being, uh, higher awareness of other dynamics. Bodies are mostly aware of their own immediate survival and their own immediate physical connections. So you have to maintain a reality on the bigger picture, inclusive of the body, in order to maintain the ethics level of a being. Once you came into the body and adopt the body's ethics level, well, then you have the ethics level of a body. And bodies are only interested in immediate needs and uh, short-term gratification. It's to you, the being, that's capable of seeing further into the future and further out across the dynamics in order to create good survival for both of you. Yeah, a body really always talks about as being an amplifier, uh, like a radio station, the way, you know, the radio waves are in the air, you tune into a station and it comes in clear, and you can turn up the volume. Well, if you're just out there looking at the environment, you, you know, you, I don't know, if you're very perceptive, you can pick up radio waves, but you don't really, you don't really hear much, most people. Anyway, uh, a body is tuned to the wavelength of the physical universe and the kind of perceptions that are, are common to everybody. And its purpose is to amplify those perceptions uh, so that you can perceive them more clearly or more solidly as a being. You know, your ears, for example, uh, amplify sound waves. You know, if you, if you didn't have this cup around your ear, you know, you wouldn't hear things quite as well. And the eyes concentrate the visual perceptions. Visual wavelengths, there's lots of other wavelengths around that you don't see. So that's the purpose of a body. And uh, one of the reasons why the you know, get get uh, dependent upon those bodies is that they're dependent upon that amplification. They're not used to perceiving things exteriorly, and things look different when you're exterior than when you're in a body with the amplification of the body. So, uh, you know, part of growing as an OT is is getting more confidence in your own ability to perceive independently of the body and to, to uh, you know, broaden out your perception and, and uh, perspective of things. But really what you need to know to be a good manager is just the basics. Because you're never, ever, ever, ever going to be as good at being a body as your body is at being a body. You can never, ever outthink your body. If you had to do all the things that your body does thousands of times every second, you could never do it. You know, what if you had to think every time you breathed in or breathed out, or every time the temperature changed and you had to change the temperature of your body, or every time you ate food and you had to digest and rub things around and, and balance the pH and, and keep your body upright and uh, Etc. 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 Your body does a very good job of being a body. So your hat is never going to be being a body. You, you can't do it. You know, you, you couldn't do it. Um, but the body can do it. The uh, really the brilliance of the holistic field is that. Things like homeopathy, uh, nutrition, and so on, help the body wear its hat and do its job. It gives the body the raw materials it needs to 
to function. Um, and it doesn't try to bypass the body by handling things with a drug or something else. So you're, you're marshalling and creating a cooperative uh, relationship and you're marshalling the body's own healing forces, the body's own vitality in order to, to do what it knows how to do. You know, your body knows how to be sick. Your body knows how to get over being sick. You know, your body just raises the temperature until uh, the immune system is revved up to the point where it's all blown out of the body. So, you know, if you bypass the body and start reducing your fevers and so on and doing things, you're just counteracting what the body knows how to do in order to get rid of an infection. 